Hello and welcome back to our tutorial. In this lesson, I'll be giving you some hints as to how to reduce lag in Sibelius and how to get the program working and responding a little bit faster. So let's be honest, most of us don't have supercomputers and so most of us will at some point begin to experience a bit of lag or delay when using Sibelius. If you don't ever have this problem, feel free to skip over this lesson. The problem of course with lag is that it makes note input, among many other things, very frustrating. Sometimes it can even lead to Sibelius crashing. I personally have a computer that's not a supercomputer, but it's certainly not a bad computer and usually I don't have a problem with lag until my scores start getting really long. For large orchestral scores, at about I would say 50 pages depending on the content, that's where I will start to experience a bit of delay, which makes working on the project gradually more and more tedious. So what I currently have open is an extreme example, a very long and rather full orchestral work. And hopefully you can see that whenever I try to navigate around the score, or select a note, or change some notes or any object, I experience quite a bit of delay. Now there are many things that we can do to decrease any lag and give your computer CPU some space to breathe. The first big thing that can help is to change the playback if you haven't already done so. If you are using one of Sibelius' sound libraries, especially for bigger scores, this will greatly increase any potential lag time, so it always helps while you are doing your note input or any sort of editing to simply change the Sibelius sounds over to something simple like MIDI output. I would only switch over to any sound libraries when you are finally ready to listen back to everything. The next thing that helps is changing a couple of preferences. If we open up the Preferences window, don't forget we can do this by hitting Control, Comma. On the left hand side, up the top, we will see Display. And here, untick Translucent Tool Windows. All this function does anyway is give us control over the transparency of any tool windows that are open on our page, such as the keypad. We really don't need this feature. Next to that, we can also untick the Smooth Staff Lines, Bar Lines and Stems box. If you untick this, you'll realise that suddenly all lines in your score render differently on the screen. They somehow look, hmm, how can I say this, thinner? You can toggle it on and off a couple of times for yourself to compare the difference and I think you'll then begin to understand what I mean. I personally usually keep this on unless lag is really bad because I like the way my scores look in the program with the smoothing setting turned on, but regardless of whether it's on or off, as it says, it won't affect the printing quality of your scores. In the score position section of the preferences window, you can also turn off during play and flexi time, use different zoom. If you turn this off, when you go to play back your score, Sibelius won't change the zoom, which will make the score playback respond just a little bit quicker. To help speed up Sibelius' startup procedure a little bit, if you go to the Ideas section of the Preferences window, untick Show Built-in Ideas. So what is this and why would we do this? Well, if we open up our Ideas window, we'll see a great big list of ideas that Sibelius suggests. Most of the time, you won't find these suggestions very useful. In fact, you'll likely never ever use them. By unticking the Show Built-in Ideas box, Sibelius won't load these example ideas on Startup, which will make the startup procedure just that little bit quicker. Now we come to a big one the Textures section. 
In our introduction lesson, I showed you how to change the textures Sibelius uses, and I encouraged you to change them to something that agrees with you and makes you feel, I guess you could say, comfortable. However, using textures in Sibelius chews up more CPU. If you want to seriously reduce lag, change all of your textures to simple colors. To do this, we scroll to the top of the textures list and select Use Color not texture. Then we select our color, hit OK, and there it is. I personally find that it looks very sterile this way, and I hate working with the program with these settings, but this should help speed up the program significantly. So if I go back to my score and have a bit of a fiddle around again after making all of these changes, It might be hard for you to tell. I am still experiencing a bit of lag, but I am definitely experiencing less lag than I was before. So if you are still having significant problems or things still aren't as quick as you would like, there are a couple more things we can do if you're working on larger projects. When we use Sibelius, the program is constantly loading or updating all of the individual instrument information, which can be a bit of a mouthful for your computer's CPU if you're working on large-scale scores. A way to avoid lag on large scores is to divide the score into separate Sibelius documents. For example, let's say you're working on a five-movement orchestral score. If you're experiencing lag, you could make each movement into its own Sibelius document and work on each movement independently. When all five movements are finally finished and polished, you can then combine them all into the one document by going to File and clicking Append, as we learned a little earlier in the tutorial. Another similar option is to use the Focus on Starves function when entering everything into the score. This way, the amount of information that Sibelius has to update is significantly reduced. The problem, of course, with this is that you will eventually have to look at and review the full score. Unfortunately, if lag is still a big problem, you're going to have to start looking at your computer. There are many helpful hints online as to how to get your computer running faster, like freeing up disk space if it's very, very full, or defragging if absolutely necessary. However, if things are really bad, I'm afraid you might have to look into getting some new hardware. So that's it. I hope that's helpful. I wish you all the best trying these things out, and I'll see you in the next lesson.